For decades, the holy grail of energy production has been cold fusion. Cold fusion promises clean, limitless energy. It has the potential to revolutionize our world. Two key concepts underpin this revolutionary technology, the McGuinty equation and quantized inertia. The McGuinty equation, created by Chris McGuinty, is an advanced theoretical framework that combines quantum field theory, fractal geometry, and gravitational effects to describe quantum interactions in complex systems. Understanding. The McGuinty equation is crucial for initiating and sustaining cold fusion reactions. Quantized inertia is a theoretical framework invented by Michael McCulloch that modifies the concept of inertia through interactions with UNRWA radiation. Quantized inertia lowers the energy required to overcome barriers, like the Coulomb barrier, which is key to achieving stable and continuous energy generation from cold fusion. Traditional fusion requires immense temperatures and pressures. Cold fusion, however, operates at much lower energy levels. This makes it potentially safer and more practical for widespread use. Next, we'll delve into the technical specifications of a cold fusion reactor blueprint. The cavity sits at the heart of a cold fusion reactor. This is where the magic happens. The design of this cavity is critical for success. It must withstand high pressures and temperatures while facilitating the fusion reaction. A typical design utilizes a double-walled structure. The outer wall provides structural support and containment. The inner wall, made of a special alloy, interacts with the fuel. This interaction is key to the cold fusion process. The shape of the cavity is also important. A spherical design is often preferred. This shape helps to distribute pressure evenly. It also maximizes the surface area for the reaction. Precise engineering and material science are crucial for a successful cavity design. Cold fusion relies on hydrogen as its primary fuel source. The process of loading hydrogen into the reactor is crucial. It involves carefully controlling the amount and pressure of the hydrogen gas. Before loading, the cavity is evacuated to create a vacuum. This ensures that no other gases interfere with the reaction. Then, hydrogen gas is introduced into the cavity. The pressure is carefully monitored and controlled. The amount of hydrogen loaded depends on the size of the reactor. Too little hydrogen and the reaction won't start. Too much and it could become unstable. Achieving the optimal hydrogen loading is a delicate balance. While cold fusion operates at lower energy levels than traditional fusion, it still requires an initial energy input. This energy input acts as a spark to initiate the reaction. Several methods can provide this initial spark. One method involves using a laser pulse. The laser is focused on the fuel target within the cavity. This creates a localized hotspot that triggers the fusion reaction. Another method utilizes a high voltage electrical discharge. The choice of energy input method depends on the specific reactor design. The key is to deliver enough energy to initiate the reaction without damaging the reactor components. Once the reaction begins, it becomes self-sustaining. Environmental conditions, creating the optimal setting. Creating the right environment within the reactor is essential for cold fusion. This involves controlling temperature, pressure and other factors. These conditions must be carefully maintained throughout the reaction process. Temperature control is critical. 
While not as high as traditional fusion, cold fusion still requires elevated temperatures. This heat increases the kinetic energy of the hydrogen atoms. It makes them more likely to overcome their natural repulsion and fuse. Pressure is another important factor. High pressure within the cavity forces the hydrogen atoms closer together. This increases the probability of collisions and fusion reactions. Precise control over these environmental conditions is crucial for achieving sustained cold fusion. The McGuinty equation, created by Chris McGuinty, extends previous models by including the effects of gravity. Experimental validation could involve testing the influence of gravity on quantum fields, especially near massive objects or in strong gravitational fields. Additionally, we explore quantized inertia, a theoretical framework developed by Dr. Mike McCulloch. According to quantized inertia, an object's inertia is influenced by the surrounding quantum field and the boundaries of the observable universe. Quantized inertia suggests that the inertia of objects changes due to the effect of UNRWA radiation, resulting in a reduced effective mass in confined spaces. This interaction lowers the energy required to overcome barriers like the Coulomb barrier in nuclear fusion. Quantized inertia has potential applications in developing new propulsion systems and enhancing the efficiency of energy systems, such as cold fusion reactors. Monitoring systems. Keeping a close eye on the reaction. Constant monitoring is essential during the cold fusion process. Sensors within the reactor provide real-time data on various parameters. This data allows for adjustments and ensures safe and efficient operation. Temperature sensors are placed at strategic locations within the cavity. These sensors provide constant readings of the internal temperature. Pressure sensors monitor the pressure levels within the reactor. This helps prevent dangerous pressure buildups. Radiation detectors are also crucial. They monitor for any potential leaks or releases of radiation. Sophisticated software analyzes the data from all these sensors. This provides operators with a comprehensive overview of the reactor's status. Thrust measurements. Quantifying the energy output. One of the exciting applications of cold fusion is its potential for propulsion. Measuring thrust generated by the reactor is key to understanding its capabilities. This involves using sensitive instruments to detect even the smallest forces. One method utilizes a torsion balance. The reactor is mounted on a platform suspended by a thin wire. As the reactor generates thrust, it causes the platform to rotate. The amount of rotation is proportional to the force generated. Another method employs laser interferometry. Lasers are used to measure tiny displacements in the reactor's position. These displacements, caused by thrust, are incredibly small. Laser interferometry provides the precision needed for accurate measurements. Thermal management. Controlling the heat. Cold fusion reactions, while more controlled than their hotter counterparts, still generate significant heat. Managing this heat is crucial for the reactor's efficiency and longevity. Thermal management systems play a vital role in this process. A common method involves using a coolant to absorb excess heat. The coolant circulates through channels surrounding the reactor cavity. It absorbs heat generated by the reaction, preventing overheating. The heated coolant then passes through a heat exchanger. The heat exchanger transfers the heat to a secondary system, such as a power generation cycle. This allows for the efficient utilization of the heat produced by the cold fusion process. Effective thermal management is essential for long-term operation and energy conversion. 
structural integrity, ensuring reactor safety. Safety is paramount in any fusion reactor design and cold fusion is no exception. The reactor vessel must withstand immense pressure and temperature fluctuations. Advanced materials and engineering techniques are crucial to ensure structural integrity. The choice of materials for the reactor vessel is critical. It must have high tensile strength and be resistant to radiation damage. Alloys composed of tungsten, titanium and other exotic metals are often used. These materials can withstand the extreme conditions inside the reactor. Computational simulations and rigorous testing are essential to validate the structural integrity of the reactor. These simulations model the stresses and strains experienced by the reactor during operation. This helps identify potential weak points and optimize the design for maximum safety. Safety measures, preventing accidents and meltdowns. Despite its inherent safety advantages over traditional fusion, cold fusion still requires robust safety measures. These measures are designed to prevent accidents, contain any potential releases, and ensure the well-being of operators and the environment. One crucial safety feature is the implementation of multiple redundant control systems. These systems constantly monitor reactor parameters and can automatically shut down the reaction if any anomalies are detected. This ensures that the reactor operates within safe limits at all times. Containment structures are another essential safety component. These structures are designed to contain any accidental releases of radiation or other hazardous materials. They act as a final barrier to protect the environment and the public in the unlikely event of a major malfunction. To summarize, a new era of energy abundance. The development of a practical cold fusion reactor marks a pivotal moment in human history. This technology has the potential to usher in a new era of energy abundance, transforming our world in profound ways. Imagine a world free from the constraints of fossil fuels. With cold fusion, we can address climate change, provide clean and affordable energy to all, and power technological advancements beyond our wildest dreams. The blueprint outlined in this essay represents a significant step towards realizing this vision. However, challenges remain in optimizing efficiency, scaling up production, and ensuring long-term stability. Continued research, development, and collaboration are essential to overcome these hurdles and unlock the full potential of cold fusion. The future is bright, and cold fusion is poised to illuminate our path.